to episode 7 of Homebrew. This week we've got Barry Mill, the madman from the front of Massive Wagons, here to talk you through the highs of the last few years and also why never drink too much water before launching into your next tune. Great, good evening, Barry, old pal. How are you doing? I'm all right, how are you? I'm okay, mate, yeah, nice to hear from you. Been a while. It has, it has been a while. How long's it been? Crikey. A few years. I think the last time I saw you guys was... Friggin' hell. I don't know. <laughs> Christ, hell's <laughs> angels have turned up. <laughs> well, I think bikes went past, yeah. Is that your fucking evil? <laughs> On his way. Friggin' hell. Um, <clears throat> yeah, was it Dreadnought? Was it that one? Dreadnought. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. That was, that was the day before... The day before Bonfest, I think. I think we were going to Bonfest uh, on our uh, way up there in Kiramua. And uh, yeah, that's right, yeah. And you were, uh, yeah, we played at the Dreadnought. Yeah, was, yeah, good night, yeah. Yeah, it was a good night. All right. Um, yeah, yeah it's quite, a, yeah, there's, there's a few in. Um, but uh, bloody hell, what the past few years you've had? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been all right, yeah. What can I say? <laughs> it's been all right. Yeah. 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 No, uh, so what? So what's happening at the minute then? Are you getting to do any rehearsing at all? Or? Yeah, well, yeah well, it's funny because well, we, we actually had a practice. We, we, we sort of knocked practices in on, on the head for a while. Um, yeah. and, but, I mean, me and, me and Adam were kind of forced into doing, I say forced, in, in a good way, really. It, it, we, we do the band full time now, which is, mm-hmm. which, which is kind of the dream, really. You know, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, but. Because of, because of um, the lockdown situation, because of the pandemic, I, I was self-employed uh, to fit in with the band stuff. But then I, I was put out of work and because I'd only been self-employed a year, I didn't get any furlough money, you see. So, oh. which which was a uh, which was shit. But uh, yeah. it, that kind of it kind of backed us into a corner and made us made us make the band thing work. Mm. So we kind of had to, and Adam gave up his job to do the band thing with me, and uh, we've sort of made a success of it, and it's kind of. When you're backed into a corner sometimes, it's, it's it's for the good, you know. It made us, you know, pick up our game a bit, and, and it's the best thing ever. Mm. Uh, so yeah, but so so now, I mean, me and me and Adam, it's it's our job. So, you know, we we started practicing again because you know it's worth. That's what you have to do. Yeah. And I don't get any furlough money, and and I want I want to eat food and live in a house. So. Well, yeah, that's that's the perfect wrong time for that to come up, wasn't it? It's funny because the police actually the police actually showed up to our rehearsal last night. Probably. Stinging the boys. So some here, yeah, somebody grasped us in for breaking COVID rules. So the police come. COVID. Yeah. It was sound though. I don't even know what they're allowed to do anymore. No, no. Well, you know, I don't. Yeah. I don't know. yeah. We were all, we were all ticking. We were all socially distanced and all that garbage. But yeah. You know, singing through your mask. Singing through my mask. Yeah. Uh, but you had, you had a decent start because it wasn't long before you're winning competitions. You got on the Ibiza circuit, and you know you got quite a lot. Pretty quickly, by the look of it. Uh, well, I, I don't know. That. I mean, it took, it took it took a lot of hard work. I mean, mm-hmm. the, 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 the the sort of the first the first sort of if you like stepping stone for us on the way to sort of doing getting anywhere in this business was was probably the highway to hell battle of the bands thing mm. uh, back in 2012 or 13, I think we did it, and uh, it was just great. And that was kind of. It was like really upper level. You're sort of playing with, playing with all these bands we, we didn't even know existed. Bands from around the country. We don't ever play with bands in our area, you know. And then yeah. you go you go to this thing, and it's bands like yourselves from all over the, wherever Scotland, Ireland, Wales. And I'm like, wow, you know, it was a real step up. And, and after that, mm. we sort of won won that. And then, uh, well, the Idle Dead actually won won the main thing at that one we played at. Mm. Uh, and after that, yeah, we played Hard Rock Hell and kind of just just took it from there really. And after that, it was uh, yeah. Talk yeah. To them. The, the path was a bit more clear, really. Yeah, I think first time I saw you was Hard Rock Hell. Uh, oh, yeah. the, the top one at Wales, yeah, I think Saxon were playing. Oh, yeah, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were good, good, they were good events. They were, they were great, you know. That, yeah. I, I really, really enjoyed them. They were, they were the, sort of really professionally run. and It was yeah. the first gigs we'd ever played where you were treated like you were meant to be there and not like a, some sort yeah. of asshole had turned up and <laughs> you were some sort of inconvenience to the sound block, you know what I mean? Yeah, you got a proper pass for it. Yeah, as with a lot of gigs, were like that. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, there's, a, there's there's quite a few of them now, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Aors, yeah. <laughs> Goth one, Stone one. Yeah. 
It seems to be, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, don't think, don't know. They don't do the Wales anymore, do they? Um, or it's, or it's, no, it's no, no. It. It. No, it's moved to. Um, yeah. oh, oh, now you're asking. We do, oh, yeah. <laughs> I've been to the place. We played another event at the new, at the one where it is now. Oh. oh, I can't think where it is. It's a long fucking way away from us, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Mm. well who's the driver? <laughs> well, it was me for about seven or eight years, but when, I'm yeah, not, I don't do that anymore. Thank goodness. Nah, no, we, yeah. We have, we have a, we have a, we have a, we have a, we have a well, we're in a fortunate position where we have a couple of crew now, so yeah. none, of, none of us drive. Thank God. Uh, that's that's the that's the start, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, yeah. You can recover on the way back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, welcome to the world comes along. Yeah. And that really sort of that seemed to dig in and really start where the changes sort of seem to happen. Uh, probably around Tokyo and ratio being on there. Um, what was it like being on the inside? Did, was it, did it feel like something was changing, that something was happening? Uh, yeah, 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 def- definitely. Definitely. I mean, Welcome to the World was the second time we'd been back. We went to the same studio that we recorded um, Fight of System at. We'd, we'd learned an awful lot and we'd, we'd written... By the third album, we'd really found a bit of a stride, really writing songs, you know, and mm. uh, we just felt the songs strong. The songs were really good, uh, and especially especially ratio, to be honest. Uh, mm. Yeah, I don't, I don't know really. It's, it's hard, it's hard to remember, but it was definitely, a, definitely a step up, and that album definitely made, made a lot more people sort of take take more notice anyway, with, without mm. without. And it's kind of become, it's kind of become an album for us, where like. Like the hardcore fans, it's their favourite. It don't really matter what you put out. You can really try it like with House of Noise and all that. They were really popular and they sold a lot more. But like you ask like any of the hardcore fans, it's like, yeah, yeah, welcome to the world. That's the one for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, the last one, the pre earache last one, I guess, isn't it? Yeah, that, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was the, yeah, that was the last one we did with uh, uh, Off Your Rocker. Off yeah. Your Rocker, yeah. That's right, yeah. Yeah, it's a, yeah. It's kind of more of a kind of more of a classic rock sound for us was that album really a bit heavier heavier sort of songs on it really and then we kind of went a bit more I don't know trying to find a bit more of a bit more of a sort of punky commercial melodic kind of sound really I, I don't know mm. we've just done whatever we fancy really yeah I mean that's that's sort of something I was going to come on to because it's initially the idea you know it's it's not a new formula sort of thing no oh. um, but <clears throat> There is a slight, there's a modern edge to it that sort of makes it stand out beyond. I mean, there's a lot of classic rock sounding bands out there, ain't there? But something really makes it sort of stands out in the front. So I didn't know if you knew what, what sort of thing was that you could pen it down to, because it's not just denim and leather and long hair. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know really. I think I don't know. We, 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 I mean, I, I write the lyrics. I try not to write. I try not. I try my best not not to write anything cliche for a start. Mm. I find I find that just 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 write my own write my own words about things. I don't write about fucking whiskey and women and you know all the things that have been done a million billion times. Yeah. I try to write about relatable things, and maybe if people can relate to the words, they sort of engage in the music a little bit more. Mm-hmm. I, know, I know Adam and Adam writes the music and he does he does agonise over it and takes a lot of time over it and tries to keep it keep the song changing and keep it interesting but keeping it sort of familiar. Yeah, it's I don't know. I suppose you you find a process, don't you? After after a number of years of writing songs, but I don't know. I don't I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Like it. I don't know. Like it. A few people have said that. It's nice, it's nice to know. That's their opinion, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, well, that's where I saw it. So, yeah, it's got a different edge to it. Um, and you, you know you, your fans are pretty damn hardcore when it comes to it. They follow you everywhere. Oh, they, oh, they do. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, we, we, again, I mean, we've been around quite a long time now. We we learned over the years that you know we got into the hard rock hell scene, and then we sort of uh, picked up a lot of the, most of the hard rock hell crowd, and we got mm. on with them and, and made an effort to be friends with them and talk to them. And then, and then you'd find those people would come away from hard rock hell, and you'd see those people at gigs. And then then we got into like. Um, it, you know, like uh, you got that the Planet Rock crowd, you know, and you pick up those pick up people from the Planet Rock crowd, and you support a band like the Wild Arts, and you get on with those guys. You do basically we just go around poaching fans from everybody, really. You know, just, <laughs> you, you tend to find a just wealth of fans. Like Prime Audio Radio, that's another one. They're a, they're a great a great bunch of people, you know. Mm. They all sort of stick. It's like a big team. 
all these all these all these units of fans are like a big family, and if you can sort of get in amongst them and and uh, impress them, and they like you, then they all seem to follow you. Do you know what I mean? It's uh, mm. it's, it's 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 great. Okay, so there. So how was that um, gig with the Wild Hearts? <clears throat> there was a few. Was it out at the main grounds as well? Oh yeah, yeah. That, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the uh, that was the um, yeah. Well, no, we did because we, oh, we did a couple of dates. Mm. We did a couple of dates with uh, with the Wild Hearts. They were rescheduled dates. One at the Ritz and one at um, Rock City. And they, that, I think they're, they're those two with the main grounds. Mm. And, uh, and then we did the Renaissance Men tour, and that was with um, that was with the uh, Towers of London. Oh yeah. Buzz and Towers of London in the Wild Arts. That that was uh, that was uh, that was incredible. That too. That was brilliant. That one. Mm. Great one. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Mm. Brilliant That's venue. It. Yeah. Well, the 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 Ritz is one of my favourite venues just to go to watch shows at. Oh yeah. I mean, I mean, I've probably seen more more bands at the Ritz than than anywhere, and then that was like a real. Well, that and Rock City are both mm. just iconic, aren't they? Just yeah, they're on, they're on there to play, aren't they? Definitely. Uh, so we'll get to it because uh, we know it was uh, one of the, the highlights of what's sort of come out out of a bad situation. Of course, we lost Path Daddy uh, at one Christmas. Yeah. Um, so back to the stat comes out and it gets back in from the sun from uh, Rick's sun. Oh yeah, I think so, I'm in the sun newspaper then. No. <laughs> I never saw that. <laughs> Yeah, the son. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, Rick's son. Rick's uh, son. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. How, how was that to to know that the families they're all right with it? Oh, I, oh yeah. I mean, well, it was actually. Well, I mean, we got we got um, we got a message from him, and we got a message from his mum, which I think mm. was Rick's second wife, Patty. She's called. And she mm. messaged us and said, "Just loved it. Thank you so much for doing it." I mean, look, I mean, you can't ask for a, for a sort of a greater, a better nod, not really, when when mm. his, uh, his his ex-wife, you know, think it's a great, a nice thing you've done. And then, mm. and because I mean, their, their fans are super hardcore, status quo, and oh, yeah. they're not ones for sort of holding back their opinions. So we were like, mm. well, they might they might hate it, think it's some sort of cheesy um, attempt at, you know, gaining some sort of something off the back of his death, you know. Uh, yeah, they all loved it, and that really wasn't the case. That isn't why we did it. But every, yeah, they, they loved it, and yeah, amazing. Mm. To be honest, that to be honest, that song was probably the big, the biggest turning point for our band today. Mm. I mean, that's 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 why we got signed to Eric because of that song. All uh, right. And Plat Planet Rock picked that song up in a bigger way than any of the other ones, and yeah, it was just great. That song, yeah, it's a revelation for us, a bit, really. Was it one of them? Was just a snap decision? We just thought we've got to do something. But, well, like, when he died, he died, and then we, he died at Christmas uh, a few years ago, and then we, we we were all away, all the lads. We hadn't got together. We got together after Christmas for our first practice back, and Adam said, oh, have, you, have you been right? You know, have you come up with anything? And he, Adam says, I've come up, with, I've come up with this riff. It's very it's very status quo for obvious reasons. He said, I was, I was just sort of jamming about. He said, he said you can take this away if you want and uh, see if you can do anything with it. And, and I kind of took it away and I thought, well, it's, it sounds it sounds very status quo anyway. Mm. So if I write anything that's, I just thought writing something about Rick was a great idea, or else it would sound like we're just trying to rip off status quo. Do you know what I mean? I thought yeah. if, I could, if I could manage to write a song about Rick, then uh, not only would it be cool, it it wouldn't make the song sound like some sort of status quo rip off song. It mm-hmm. would it would, it would it would be in keeping with uh, Rick's memory, if you like, you know. Mm. So, so that's what we did, it, yeah, and uh, it, it turned out turned out pretty good. Yeah, turned out all right, didn't it? Yeah. How did that happen? Well, that's it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, obviously the Quo are up there with influences on on the band. Mm-hmm. It sort of really comes back again to the sound again, in that a lot of bands out there misuse the word influence <clears throat> and just copy. Whereas, yeah. whereas you guys don't, you sort of take it further and use it as an influence. So who, who else is in that um, that bag of influencers and influencees? Oh, um, I mean, de- definitely, definitely the Wild Arts. Mm. Um, definitely Terror Vision, I would say. Hey, <laughs> yeah, well, great, aren't they? Um, I mean, Adam, Adam, and Adam and Stephen. I mean, they're, 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 those are for me. The, the Wild Arts, Terror Vision, big influences on me. 
Mm. Um, I'd say for Adam, Adam and Stephen, it's definitely a bit more classic rock. Um, UFO, uh, Scorpions, uh, oh, right. Thunder. Um, but, you know, oh, awesome. very classic stuff. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Matt, yeah. the massive. Everybody in the band's a UFO fan. I mean, yeah, I think, I think, I think Stephen's uh, solo in in this, our song "Hero" sounds very sort of mm. UFO sort of inspired. Yeah, they were great on yeah, you for yeah. Mm. I mean, we sort of changed influences over the years. I, I don't think we've ever consciously, like you say, we don't we don't consciously draw from bands. We just sort of it's very natural, but it just it just comes out like that, which I suppose it does with a lot of bands. You just you just it's just how it is, you know. Mm. Listen to a lot of music. I suppose if the broader the broader your sort of the music that you listen to, the, the more influences you can sort of draw on. We would listen to all sorts of country music or pop music or... Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, like uh, Royal Republic, I don't know if you've, you've listened to them much at all. Uh, no, it's one of them where I've heard of them, not, not heard... Oh, they're great, they're like... Um, yeah. Kind of like, don't be put off by the phrase disco rock. Because um, <laughs> it kind of is and it kind of isn't. It's kind of got like a disco vibe, but they're like very much a rock band. Mm. But they're, they're fucking outstanding. Di yeah. uh, yeah, they're amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Amazing. Yeah, we well, can't just stick to one sort of type, can you? You got to oh, no, venture not. out, you know. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, uh, so quite a few of the folks that I've spoken to uh, so far have, have sort of ventured beyond the music as well. Um, so, like I was saying, about the, my dying bride we had last week, and I've got Jim Rota coming out on Saturday. These guys have got things like their own beers out and ventured into doing, you know, things on. TV soundtracks and stuff. Yeah, is that something that you guys have thought about or have? Yeah, I mean, well, well, Eric, Eric have a um, have a publishing uh, department if you like, and there's there's always there's always stuff going on, you know, mm. things trying to be found. We, we've come close to a few things. Uh, you, you sometimes you find you find you get you get information. They'll say, oh yeah, you know, we've got these these people on for this advert or this game or a film mm. or a series. You know, they, they've picked these songs and they like this song of yours, and, and then nothing will come of it. You know, so I mean. I suppose there's that there's that many songs out there and that many bands doing it. It's it's hard to get to get on something, but mm. yeah, we, we do we do try it definitely, you know. You know, I mean, we we did we never had a, we talked about having a beer, but it kind of fell through. There was a brewery near us that that, that was going to make one for us, but mm. that kind of fell on the stony ground during the pandemic. Uh, so that never happened. Um, so we decided to go with a curry. We've got a curry made. A curry. <laughs> a curry, yeah. The rog and the rog and mosh. <laughs> excellent excellent yeah, yeah. Who, who came up with that uh, yeah i think i came up with that yeah yeah brilliant <laughs> right. but yeah, that, obviously that was uh, that was like to do with the curry song yeah uh, mm. but yeah we, we saw we sold them on our, our website it, it, we know a guy who runs a, a, a he makes his own curries and he he just knocked his one up and we uh we renamed it and sold it it was great oh, yeah with it yeah <laughs> good call good call <laughs> um <clears throat> so like you say you've you've well, you've been going what ten years? Uh, yeah, about, about ten or eleven years. We'd be eleven yeah. years. Now. So there's been obviously ten years of hard graft. But what was it like to finally hit the cover of Classic Rock magazine? I saw you next to Keith Richards in uh, <laughs> Morrison's. Uh, Keith and Angus. Angus. Yeah. <laughs> they'll, they'll probably if they read that magazine, they'll be like, "Who the fucking hell is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> and why is he? Why is he on the? Why is he at the top?" I don't know. <laughs> I, I didn't know anything about that. I, I, yeah. I, we we had um, classic rock are great. They've been great to us. We're doing a bit of stuff with them, and they 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 done an interview with me and Adam for like an end of the year thing, and they mm. it said that oh you're gonna you, you, your um your album's gonna feature in the top fifty of the year or something or something I can't remember what it was. And mm. They said oh there's a few things in there, but they, they never mentioned the they never mentioned the cover, and then I I subscribed to it anyway. So when it came in the post, I was like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Get that on the wall. This is absolutely crazy. What's my ugly face doing on there? I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Uh, it, 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 it it's, it's just, yeah, it's just it's things like that just blow your mind. You just remember you just remember back to like getting together with the lads and just it just being a play around, you know, and you're playing in mm. the in working men's club, you know, playing ten covers twice. Mm. To about four people, and then yeah. and, and then it comes full circle, and it's like, freak, bloody hell, you know. I've I've subscribed to that magazine for about flipping twelve years, and yeah. now I, my face is on the cover. I was like, blew, blew me away completely. One of those moments. <laughs> moments, yeah. Hmm. 
Because, yeah. well, there seems to have been a few of those because every album since uh, Welcome to the World has, has, has been in the charts. Oh, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, well, that, that was a lot down. I mean, that, that, I mean, a lot of that was down to, I mean, getting a decent management, having decent management and, like, people who can trust, and then you get a label like Earache, you've got a bit of clout and contact mm. and stuff, and you all work together, and you're all on the same page, and then you manage, to, you find that you just push, push it in the right, pushing things in the right direction, whereas before, you just, as a band, you're just pushing anything, any which way you can, to try and get noticed by whoever, really. You just, somewhere, yeah. You don't know where you're going, you're just pushing and shouting, but if you can, fo- if you find the right people to tell you what to do and focus it, then it's a lot more productive. Mm. So that, that's kind of what happened, really. Yeah. Yeah. Our manager's an absolute fucking slave driver. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's the job. No. <laughs> she's got a cricket bat. Yeah, she's got a few, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All different sizes, depending on how bad I am. Oh, nice. Um, <clears throat> what about your mural, then? So. Oh, yeah. That. Phil and Nelson th- cracks on. <laughs> it's still there, anyway. Is it still there? It's still there, it's staying. It, 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 the, 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 the pub was actually sold. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah a, a, a couple of years ago, I think. And we got mm. told it was going to be turned into like a Thai restaurant or something. But it turns out the guy that bought it um, actually just, just renovated it and he's turned it into a, into, a, in a, in, into a venue. It was a venue before, but it was just for kind of cover bands. He's put, a, he's put an outdoor mm. stage in there and he must have spent, I'd dread to think how much he spent on it, but it's awesome. He's completely renovated. It's amazing, which yeah. I'm pleased about. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that damn mural, yeah, it's, um, it's clean, yeah, apparently. He's had to pay some money to, for it to stay another year, but... Oh, uh, the council keeps threatening to take it down? I think they keep sending him letters, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. No, nobody's drawn a big dick on it yet, either, which you're quite surprised about. <laughs> oh, there's an idea, yeah. <laughs> that is surprising for the centre of Lancaster. That is surprising, you right. Yeah. Uh, right, cool, OK, so we'll get on to Rig Rundown. Rig Rundown. Which, which will be, I no. imagine, quite brief, <laughs> but we'll see. I, don't even know, I probably don't even know what I'm talking about, so... Well, I mean... I'm not a guitar nerd, you see, so... No, I mean, have you got any guitars? I don't know. Have I? Um, yeah. I used to play bass guitar. Did you? I, I, did, I did, yeah. Well, I actually, played, I actually played bass guitar in the band that I met Adam in. Oh, right. Yeah, it's a funny, funny story. I started a cover band with a guy uh, where I live. He was singing, I was playing bass. And then Bowser actually joined that band as the guitar player, as another guitar player, six-string player. Yeah. And then he left, and then another Adam joined, and then he left, and then Adam Thistlethwaite joined. And uh, then me and Adam Thistlethwaite kind of hit it off. And then that, that band kind of, it was a cover band, that kind yeah. of band kind of went uh, sort of separated. I stopped playing bass guitar. Well, I, actually, I tell a lie, I played bass guitar in a metal band from Lancaster called Prometheum <laughs> for a few years. Prometheum. Um, yeah, yeah, obviously that was a memorable experience and they forgot about it. <laughs> uh, um, and then I just took up singing, yeah. And uh, yeah, I, 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 I kind of wish I had time to play bass guitar again. I, I just don't have time anymore, mm. which, is, which is one of the reasons I left Prometheum because I've just... Couldn't devote my time to it because it was just, I was just too busy. Uh, but no, I can't play guitar. Yeah. It's shit. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, so on, on the singing side, I mean, do, do you miss? Because you, you really can't. There's nothing to hide behind when you're a singer. No. Oh, you know? well, that helps. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Bowl out maybe. All right. But, yeah. um, but I mean, do you do you miss it? Do you even take a mic with you? What do you mean? What, do, do, do I miss it? Well, do you miss no, no, not singing. Do you miss um, having the guitars or a bass, or do you prefer the singing? Well, that's what you do now, obviously. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I prefer. I don't know really. I prefer, I prefer singing. I prefer doing what I'm doing now. Absolutely. I wish, yeah. I wish I did still play bass guitar because I, I really, I really did love doing it. You know, I wasn't, mm. I wasn't brilliant at it, but I, I enjoyed it. But it was a different thing. It was totally relaxed. Really, I was just. Just a, mm. just a weekend cover band, really. Mm. Uh, but no, I much, much, much prefer this, uh, to be honest. Yeah. yeah it's less bothering about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so when you guys go out on tour, um, say Europe or wherever, you got a decent run. Mm. Um, do, do you go through the warm-ups? Uh, how do you keep... Because uh, you hit some right notes. 
<laughs> yeah. You, uh... I mean, it's, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, it, it was. Ne- it's never been. It's, it's never been so bad in the past because because we've always worked. It's gigs have always been at kind of weekends, Friday, Saturday, Sundays. Mm. Um, so so it's not so it's not too bad, you know. My voice will last three days singing an hour a night, an hour and a half a night. It's no problem. Mm. Um, my limit's about four days. If I have to do it for four days, then after four days it'll take about a week to recover. Um, but you know, when you're out on tour as a support band, you're only doing maybe half an hour. Um, so again, you can do I can do more dates only singing half an hour a night. I can maybe do six or seven nights, no problem. Mm. You see, the problem we've got coming up now is. Is, is is doing a full length tour where we're playing a headline set, oh, okay. which is going to be an hour, you know, so that's going to be a number of days in a row, which is something I've never, you might find it hard to believe, even though I've been going 11 years, I've never, never done that. It's always been weekends or half an hour slots, which is, I can mm. handle, but, so yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I always, it's, the last couple of years, certainly, when things started getting a bit more serious, uh, warming up for gigs uh, with some vocal exercises and trying to warm down. Mm. Uh, not well. The hardest one is. I mean, the last two we went on. I would two is I don't drink anyway. I don't don't have a beer. Don't drink. Rest my voice as much as possible. Don't talk. Just sing. Mm. Um, try. I mean, the, the hardest thing for me is not getting carried away on stage, which which is easy to do. Yeah. You know, it's just like really giving, you really want to give everyone a great show and really, really fucking go for it and sing as hard as you can. But when you've got a lot number of dates to do, you've got to kind of rein it in a little bit, which is kind of difficult. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is someone's first time seeing you, isn't it? So it's... Yeah, that's it. You want, to, you want to blow everyone away, don't you? So, mm. but, I, but I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We've got this tour in September, which is the longest set of dates I've ever done. So, mm. I don't know. We'll see. And, and I mean, things like strategically picking your set is another thing you've got to pick you can't have a song you can't have a set full of songs that are hard to sing or else you're going to last a few days and then you're going to be knackered you've got to be it's got to be a bit strategic Mm. which is all these little things hopefully will help so yeah it must take a a bit of a toll even physically we've got to be you know you've got to be fit to do it yeah i kind of i kind of like that i kind of like i like the uh i like the workout i I like I like going for it. I like it. I like it to be tough, you know. I like to be mm. knackered when I go off stage and sweating and knowing that you've absolutely given it everything. It's a great mm. feeling. Um, but the, yeah, let me tell you, the older you get, like, I, I mean, I'm I'm 24 now, so I mean, <laughs> I'm knackered. Yeah. It's a long, <laughs> long paper round. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, and I was also uh, we were signed up for download. And it's gone. I know, I know. Eh? What happened there? Oh, yeah. yeah. And you do. What a kick in the knackers. But I mean, hopefully, 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 when they, I mean, I think, they're, I think, I think they're going to rebooking bands. I don't, I don't know if, I don't, I don't know the, the script with it to be honest. Nobody tells me anything, but um, I don't know if they've scrubbed it and they're starting again. I know some some festivals have had lineups and they've got rid of them and they're rebooking different bands. So with a bit of luck, with a bit of luck. I mean, I mean, to be honest. That was something I was kind of worried about when we decided to release the album during lockdown. As good as it did and as amazing as it was, mm. I sort of said to Terry, our manager, I said, the only trouble is, is by the time we come to book anything, the, the, the kind of, I don't want the hype to have gone, you know? Yeah. You, you, you kind of want you kind of want to piggyback off the, do your, you want your album to do well, and then piggyback mm. off that, off the, PR, the press and the, the hype. But by the time anything comes round again, that album will have been out a year. I just mm. hope people booking festivals still bear us in mind as a band that are current, you know. Mm. But, you know, hopefully. Yeah. That's anyway. a good point, isn't it? Yeah, because that's, that's the reason for touring it. Yeah, that's um, it. Exactly, yeah. 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 But anyway. Yeah, no, it'd be good to see you back on, well, on the second stage. I think you were in the tent last time, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, that's it. The, the second, yeah, the second stage. I mean, that's fucking great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pretty good. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> um, Reet, we'll get on to your five at dawn. Your five questions. Let me have it. Oh, good. That, that was pleasing. That was a pleasing sound. I'm ready for you? I'm ready for it. Ah, Rock City. Rock City. Nottingham, Rock City. Yeah. I like Good that. choice. Great, great venue. Any reason why? Just because you love it. And it's always been a classic, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's like everybody plays there. All the big bands have played there. Massive mm-hmm. bands have played there. 
it's just just a great atmosphere. Just 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 love the place. I just think it's just mm. absolutely. Uh, I'd, actually, I'd say the, the, the my one the one place I'd love to play would be Glasgow Barrowlands. Mm. I mean, it, it, Rock City is the best one. I think the, my favourite we've played. But if I was to play anywhere, then Barrowlands is a bit of a bit of a sort of a one on the list, if you like. You know, I've seen yeah. lots of there, and that's a great venue. Yeah, you want to speak to the Gizzies to go out with Gun. They always pack that place oh, out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, uh, worst live moment. Okay, Stephen knocking me off the stage in Markham. <laughs> a tosser. Love uh, it. No, uh, no, that was quite funny, actually. I quite enjoyed, it was quite funny. I look at it. Worst, worst moment on stage. Uh, I once vomited in the back of Adam's amplifier. Nice. I drunk, I drunk too much water. And then uh, we come to do a little song, and, he, and I went to introduce it, and I had to stop the song at the beginning of the song, and then I had to walk to the back of the stage, and uh, I vomited, I vomited in the back of Adam's amplifier, and then, and then we carried on. Um, I don't really know what else to do. It was either that or vomit over the people in the front row. So yeah, well, out of the two, yeah, 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 so. yeah good choice. Maybe if you'd been in Prometheum, you could have gone for the front row. But I yeah. vomited over the guitar player on purpose in that band, to be honest. Fair enough. Yeah. Why not? Um, worst loading. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, worst loading. Well, the one that immediately springs to mind is Sin City in Swansea. Ah, yes. We, load in and load out. They're both awful. Mm. Absolutely awful. We, the, 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 have you been there? It's come up uh, as one of the other ones. Someone else has mentioned that one, yeah. There's a fucking separate. Yeah. yeah. Um, off the top of my head, there's a cat house in Glasgow, that's terrible as well. Yeah, that is a shocker, that one we have done, yeah. The front stairs, isn't it? Hmm. And the taxi, Four there's stories. A, there's a taxi rank outside, it's always jam-packed with angry jocks. They normally, yeah. You can't park your van there, can you, because they're all going crazy. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's right in the... Yeah, there's like nowhere that. to go, is there? I'd say Sin City in Swansea, though. It's a, it's a great venue, though. We played there with those damn crows and Henry's mm. Royal Shoe, and the gig was amazing, but, yeah, the load out was terrible. It was like... Mm. Two o'clock in the morning, pissing rain, and then it was down like a load, of, down a load of metal fire stairs at the back of the venue. And everything's painted black, and there's no street lights. Perfect. It's an accident <laughs> way to happen. <laughs> well, as blame as a claim. Brilliant. Uh, is there anyone you would like to work with? <laughs> anyone I'd like to work with? Um, oh, I don't know, really. Uh, Oh, crikey. I don't know. I don't know, really. The millions of people. Off the top of my head. Okay, now that's a tough one. Anyone would like to work with? I have no idea. You might not, I don't know. Uh, that's something I'd have to sit and think about. Again, I do love, well, I love television. I mean, do, do to do something with them, that'd be great. Television? Yeah, or uh, uh, fucking hell, I don't know. I have no idea. I can't speak to Danny. You speak to Danny, you might hook you up. Yeah, well, yeah, you never know, do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know anyone I'd like to work with. That's a tough question. I'd have to think about that. I'll have to come back to you. <laughs> I don't think about it. I don't no, know. Yeah, drop us a line. We'll put it on. I'll, 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 you can edit it in. Yeah, <laughs> we'll chuck it in. Just make yeah. sure you got the same background on. Yeah. Uh, Right, uh, and beer or a cheeky red? Oh, beer. 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 Straight up. Well, red wine. Oh, yeah. Um, you know what? I've, I've, only ever, I've, only, I've only ever drunk red wine once or twice in my whole life. Oh, yeah, fair um, enough. Never, 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 really, uh, never, really, never really had it. And the only time I have had it is just when there's nothing else to drink and there's a bottle of it floating around. You gen- tend to find at various events, don't you? All the beers, yeah. somebody's got a bottle of fucking... Port or something, or red wine. <laughs> some Advoca and some Midori, yeah. <laughs> Midori? What the hell? Yeah, that's the stuff. In the past. <laughs> you got, something just gone crusty after a few months. You know. <laughs> that's it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Brill, nice one, Barry. Well, thanks for joining us. Thanks hey, no for worries. your time. My pleasure. Um, and uh, enjoy what have you going to come up with next uh, assume onwards and upwards if you yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, we're sort of racing we've got a live a live stream in Leeds this weekend oh yeah yeah um, so that's on Saturday we've been practicing for that 
See. Yeah, no, yeah, we're, we're, so, we're yeah. Writing, writing songs, carry, carrying on. Mm. But yeah, the, the, the ironic thing is, we'll, we'll probably have another album written and recorded before mm. we've had a chance to bloody two of this one, so which could be a bit of a shit house. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, we'll carry on, we'll carry on, right? Yeah. Same old, same story. Oh, just could repeat the process. It seems to be all we can do at the minute, dude. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Real well. Again, thanks for joining us, Barry. Hey, no worries. We will catch you at some point when we're allowed to. Hopefully. You will indeed. Ciao for now.